Okay, hello, welcome to my presentation today. My name is Dr. Patrick McCarthy, and I'm a technologist from Genco Air Limited, based in Liverpool in the United Kingdom. And today I'm going to be speaking to you about the benefits of using a magnetic active anode in the sputtering of reticular microtrons. Okay, so just a brief overview of, the, of Genco Air. So they specialize in the production of sputter microtron cathodes, as well as various other thin film deposition components. Uh, so we've got things like planar magnetrons, circular magnetrons, and ion uh, plasma pretreaters. Uh, we also produce a range of plasma control systems, so known as our speed flow, which are reactive gas processes, and our optic system, which helps us to identify residual gases in the vacuum system. So I just bring to your attention the active anode and the rotatable magnetron, which is the focus of today's talk. Okay, so we've got some nice images of uh, our ion sources, of our magnetron systems, and as well as this, we've got our full face erosion magnetron. So by varying the magnetic field across the surface of your target, you can utilize more of the target during the sputtering process. And this is something which is used uh, with not a very magnetic field, but in rotatable magnetrons, we can utilize more of the target. So why do we use rotatable magnetron sputtering? Again, so this is improved target utilization. So by rotating the target 360 degrees during the process, you can sputter more of your target. The, uh, the magnetic field is stationary during this process. As well, with rotatable magnetron sputtering, you get arc suppression during the reactor process. And so what sort of applications would you need to use this for? So it's essential in the deposition of large area glass for architectural applications, roll-to-roll -roll web coatings, and in the production of flat panel displays uh, and photovoltaic solar cells. Okay, so here's a schematic of the industry standard for rotatable microtron sputtering. So it's using an AC system. You can see two targets here. So these lines here, they indicate the magnetic field, and then I've indicated the position of the substrate about 100 millimeters away from your target. So this region in yellow, this is, uh, this is an issue with this particular setup. So this is leak current. So the electrons will leak to the, to the rear side of your target, which we don't want. You, don't, you want to keep your plasma near the substrate to enhance that ion bombardment, as well as keeping the plasma there to sputter as much of the target as you can. Okay, so Jake Cora developed a method to hopefully alleviate this issue for AC systems and also offer some improvement for DC pulse systems as well. So you see this anode is now defined here. And due to the, ma the magnetic attraction of the anode, we can confine the electrons to the region where we want it in between the targets. So now we've reduced this AC current leak due to the magnetic configuration. And then for DC pulse systems, the added benefit is defining a consistent anode for the electrons to flow to during the reactive processes. As in reactive processes, there is a chance that the walls can become coated with dielectric and you have this disappearing anode effect. Okay, so here's the schematic of the plasma system with the active anode. So you see this is the active anode which we produce. Here's an image of it in our plasma system over here. And then here's a schematic of the system, which many of the tests will run with today. So uh, aluminium cylindrical targets, about a metre in length, and the active anode also mirrors the length of the cathode, about a metre as well. Okay, so here's a short video to help you visualise what will happen to the plasma when the active anode is activated. So you see the plasma more disperse, and then as we activate the anode, the electrons flow towards the anode, and you get this increase in plasma intensity near the anode. And then as it's less active, you see the plasma becomes less localised to the anode and more dispersed. Okay, so that was a good visualisation of what actually happens to the plasma, but how is the process affected by the active anode? So now we can go through it in a few uh, examples here. So this is process stability with AC and DC pulse systems. So this is stability uh, in the DC pulse rotatable microtron system without an active anode. So as I was saying before, in reactive sputter, and there is a chance that you coat the chamber walls in a dielectric, and this removes the anode from your circuit. And when we were running our speed flow reactive uh, sputter process control system, and you can see that by trying to control the oxygen flow of the target voltage, the target voltage is very unsteady. And so then this is mirrored in the oxygen flow, which is also very unstable. And with the active anode, you can see this increase in intensity, but the plasma is now localized over here. And then you can see in the graph on the right, the improved stability of the voltage on the target. And then this is followed by improvement in stability of the oxygen flow into your system. For an AC system, you can see the images on the right. So the plasma is more dispersed when there is no active anode. It's been fed into your chamber. And then with the active anode on the left, you see it's more localized to the region uh, between the two targets. So it's going to be closer to your substrate. So how does these anode plasmas affect the coatings that you might get from this process? 
Okay, so now we can look at that through some aluminium oxide coatings, which we produced in DC Pulsed and AC systems with the anode. So here's an image of an aluminium oxide layer produced with DC Pulsed system without the active anode, and then with the active anode. So you can see that both images show columnar structures, and there is an improvement in the density and the hardness with DC Pulse with the active anode. We'll see that more in a few seconds. So there's cross-sectional SEM of, of uh, aluminium oxide layer produced in an AC system without the active anode. You see it's denser than DC pulsed. However, when we compare it to AC system with the active anode, you can see this improvement in the density, much, much more dense. And we also examine these samples for the hardness. So it's a typical hardness test. So you load a force onto your sample and then unload it. And then this displacement, this indicates a level of hardness on the sample. I'm just draw your attention to the table on the right. So you have DC pulsed anode with no anode, DC pulsed with an anode, and you can see there's a 30% increase in the hardness. And then with AC system without the active anode, and then AC system with the active anode, you can also see a 13% increase in your aluminum oxide hardness rating. So now we move on to a different material. So this is carbon. So this is carbon which we've deposited using the active anode. So on our untreated glass substrate, before the abrasion test and after the abrasion test, you can see indicated by this red square here, with many, many scratches on the surface. And then after treatment at two kilowatts of power, 50 kilohertz frequency of AC power, you can see now that after the abrasion test, test after being coated with diamond like carbon, you can see the, the number of scratches are reduced. So then we move on to the transmittance of the glass as well, which is important. So the transmittance test in air is 100%. And then the most important parts are to focus on the red bar and the green bar. So the red is the untreated glass. And then the green is the treated glass with the diamond like carbon. You see there's very, very little change in the transmittance around just 1%, which is a positive result. Okay, now we look at the plasma anode activation with gas injection. So what is this? So we haven't really focused on the mode of gas injection into the system. With, but in the earlier examples, the gas was injected into the walls of the chamber. But how is it affected by if we inject the gas through the anode? So this image on the right, you can see it's really intense region. And you're going to get these bursts of plasma from the anode. Okay, now these are the voltage waveforms with the gas being injected through the walls. So for each cathode, we've taken a voltage waveform and then using a floating electrostatic probe, we measure the voltage. And this is indicative of your current, which we would get to a floating substrate such as glass. And then we can compare this to the voltage waveform when we inject the gas through the active anode. Okay, so now on the left, so this is an AC system with the active anode, but the gas injected through the walls. And on, on the right, this is the voltage waveform to the probe with the gas injected through the active anode. So now when we look closely at these, you can see that introducing O2, plus O2 through the plasma in the anode zone, so this increases the voltage pulse intensity uh, when the gas is injected through the active anode. So it produces higher O2 ion bombardment when we're injecting the gas through the anode. And so then if we just look a bit closer at this waveform, we can break it down into its um, components. So point one, we're getting this 10EV positive bombardment. And then we, as, as the pulse starts to neutralize, we get this negative ion bombardment. And we think through the interplay of these two things, this is what's leading us to get very dense and smooth structures in our, in our coatings. And um, these coatings have very little internal stress. So these four ways of energy assistance happen at the frequency of the AC power, which in this case was 50 kilohertz. And we believe that this power and magnetic arrangement is ideal for high quality optical layers at high rates. Okay, so now we move on to a different power system, similar to AC, but this is a square wave pulse, but there are other parameters which we control. So here, this is the advanced energy ascent power supply. And in this square wave, you have the addition of a dead time. So what that means is that during a half cycle of the pulse, you can switch off the pulse. And then the other half, you can also switch off the pulse as well. And so we were looking at, is there any benefit to our process? Can we measure any voltage change at the probe surface? Okay, so on the left, we've got the AC system, the active anode, and the gas injected through the anode. And on the right, this is with the square wave, advanced energy acid power supply, with the gas also injected through the anode. So very similar processes, but different, different power, so AC and square wave. So you can see when the AES and power supply is used, you can see this amplitude of the voltage pulse is massively increased. So 
So we're getting now 46 EV, roughly, 0.3 here. You know, if we go down to 4, we're getting this negative minus 25 EV bombardment. So we believe that combining both the positive and negative bombardment, this equalizes the film stress. This will help prevent deformation. And so this gives an added benefit to the asset because it's definitely more flexible because we can add in this, this dead time and we can see this improvement in the pulse. We've got different, different pulse um, parameters which we can change now. Okay, so again, looking at the AES and power supply, so looking at the optical emission. So we can look at the optical emission for a specific power and play around with these parameters, see what happens to the, if we change the dead time, what happens to the ion neutral ratio. So what we've done is we've normalized our spectrums to the 777 peak, and then looking at the most intense peak, which is 559.1 nanometer wavelength for O2 plus. And when we look at the ion to neutral ratio, you can see that as we vary the dead time, so from zero nanoseconds to a thousand nanoseconds, we are changing this ion to, to neutral ratio. The most positive situation was when we used uh, 1,000 nanosecond dead time on the first half of the cycle of the pulse, and then 1,000 nanosecond dead time on the second half of the pulse. And this gives us a 20% increase in the ion to neutral ratio for O2 ions. Okay, so let's look at the substrate temperature now. As we were saying, the active anode will guide the electrons towards uh, a consistent anode during the process. And as you can imagine, a lot of the electrons are what you get your substrate heat from. So if you guide them towards an anode, you may see some reduction in the heat, which is what we see here. So if you look at the DC power system with 11 kilowatts, you can see here that without the anode, uh, the temperature of substrate rises dramatically, whereas with the anode, it's a much, much slower increase. So with the anode, is less than 95 degree uh, increase, and without the active anode, is 160, in excess of 160. So much more heating when you don't have the active anode in the system. And now this slide looks at different configurations of the anode with different power systems, with DC, DC pulse, alternating currents, medium frequency, and then with the square wave of the ascent. And so we saw that when we were looking closely at the, the variation in temperature with time, that actually we tended to see a lower substrate temperature when the um, advanced energy ascent was used. Um, so this indicates to us that using the ascent gives you a greater heat management at your substrate surface. Okay, so then moving on to part six, which is the final part, so external anobiosin. So using the anobiosin for particular plus processes may be a requirement to have an electrical bias on the anode. Uh, it's well known that the, uh, the application of a uh, positive bias in the anode is known to give great control over the ion energy influx uh, to your substrate. So, for example, in indium tin oxide coatings, you may want a, a lower cathode voltage uh, for your process, and as well as in uh, aluminium oxide coatings. So, through the use of resistor capacitor circuitry, we've been able to stably uh, demonstrate that we can bias the anode. So, this is an example of a schematic of the system that I was using. So biasing the two cathodes from the same DC pulse power system and then using an external DC power system on the anode. So now I can take you through different anode biases to uh, show you that it was done stably. So four kilowatts or 13 amps in your plasma. So as we increase this anode bias from 40 through to 60 and that's 80. So the blue is the anode voltage and the, red and the pink is the cathode voltage. You can see the shift as we're increasing that anode voltage up to 100 volts. And now we look at trying to bias the system with two different power supplies for each cathode and then a DC power su uh, supply system for your anode. So trying to demonstrate that we can do this stably. So when we increase the anode voltage to an excess of 100 volts, you can see that both target voltages in, uh, decrease, become less negative as we increase this anode voltage. So we demonstrated that we can get a stable anode bias and through synchronization of two cathodes with two DC power uh, DC pulse power systems, we can do this stably. So now I can show you a quick video to help you visualize this. So in the top left is the external bias power supply on the anode. So going from zero to 100 volts. On the right, so the pink is the cathode voltage. And then in the yellow, that is the anode voltage. And you can see that as we increase from zero to 100, it happens stably. And then in the bottom here, you can see what happens to the plasma visually. So when we go from zero to 100 volts on the anode, you can see an increase in the intensity of the plasma near the anode. Okay, so the conclusion for today, so we've demonstrated that the active anode improves process stability in the DC pulse reactor process and for AC systems. We've demonstrated some improved density of the aluminium uh, oxide coatings as we've gone from DC pulse with no anode to with an anode. Um, and in AC, 
with no anode and with the anode. And then we also showed the improved scratch resistance when we produced some VLC uh, coatings on glass when the active anode was in the system. We showed that the anode bombardment can be enhanced through the use of gas injection through the active anode, through that change in the voltage waveform at the floating probe. We demonstrated the redu reduction in the surface uh, temperature with and without the anode, so with the anode, so the surface uh, substrate temperature is lower. And then we've demonstrated that we can stably bias the anode um, in a three power supply system uh, with the DC pulse system. So thank you very much for listening.